First Sand in the Field, Real Issues, Real Solutions is brought to you by Newport First Sand Jamaica Limited, the first on the land. It's now time for First Sand in the Field, Real Issues, Real Solutions, and the heat is on. What are the implications, though, for increased temperatures on insect pest dynamics? That is what we're tackling this morning. And we're joined by Siobhan Little, Product Development Agronomist. Siobhan is flying solo this morning. Good morning, Siobhan, and welcome back to the program. How are you? Morning, Althea. I'm not too bad. I'm counting my blessings. Good, 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 as we all should. And part of the blessings that we're counting, we're getting additional rainfall. But, Siobhan, we're in the Atlantic hurricane season. So, any way you cut it, we have to encourage caution. Absolutely. Absolutely. But this, despite that, Siobhan, despite the fact that we're in the hurricane season, we really have been facing some very, very hot times. And uh, based on what we're getting from the meteorologists, it's it's going to get even hotter. Uh, and of course, I have I, I have a feeling that uh, more of us are sitting up and paying attention to all of this heat. Why should farmers be concerned about this issue? Excellent question, Althea. Well, let me set the context. As global temperatures continue to rise, the delicate balance of our ecosystem is being disrupted. And this disruption has significant implications for agriculture as it affects water availability, plant physiology, and the big ticket item, insect pest dynamics. So, with respect to water availability, increased temperatures means that plants require more water. And the, this is further compounded by the fact that the plants are going to be transpiring much more quickly, therefore reducing soil mo moisture levels significantly. So we have a case where soil, the, the, the plants, they're going to be using, require much more water because the temperature is high and they're reducing the water in our soil much more quicker than expected. This is then further compounded by extreme conditions such as drought. And all of our farmers and listeners know the consequences that drought can have for agriculture. The next issue that we have is the high temperature causes the plants themselves to suffer. So if the temperature gets too high, you tend to see the plants leaves wilting, um, plants leaves falling off. Yeah, yeah, it affects new young plants, decreases seed germination, affects mature plants with fruits. Sometimes you see the fruits discolored. It reduces the viability of pollen. So you, you even have less fruits being produced. So all of this has the overarching effect of reducing agricultural productivity. And one of the more important ones that I want to focus on today is really insect pest dynamics. Because as the temperature rises, it affects the insect pest population and how they interact with their environment. And what we've and realized... How they, and how they interact with us too. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that but we've that, realized... Sure, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Right. So one of the things that we've realized is that some of the crops like corn, wheat, rice, these create things that we use internationally because these crops account for about 42% of the food that humans consume. And what we've realized from research is that each degree, one degree increase in temperature will result in losses from these crops of between 10 to 25%. And let me bring it closer to home. 
in Jamaica, our local temperatures have increased by 0.6 degrees Celsius over the last 30 years, with the minimum temperatures rising at a much faster rate than the maximum temperatures. So what does that mean? It means that pretty soon, most of our crops, we're going to begin suffering significant losses from most of our crops due to insect death as the temperatures continue to rise. So we have to prepare for that eventuality because, you know, if we don't, if we fail to prepare, we are what? Preparing to fail. We, we're preparing to fail, yes. And the writing, the writing is on the wall. And, and I'm asking the question, uh, as you are and the rest of the team, you're going to the different locations, different areas in the island where, where, where we're seeing farming taking place. It, is there an increase the level of awareness about the challenges that uh, as a country and a people we are going to face as a result of these increasing temperatures and their impact on the insect population? I would like to believe that there is, but there is significant work that must be done in order to bring us to the level where we need to be to be able to fully mitigate against the adverse impacts that is going to result from these challenges. So, so, so much more, much more to be done, and developing a better understanding of the issues, which is why we have these conversations. But I want for you, though, Shavan, to just drill down a little bit more for us. What are some of the changes, or uh, that we're expecting to see, expecting to occur, uh, as there is this change in insect pest dynamics uh, as a result of the increased temperatures? What right. more can we expect? Right. So. Very good question, Althea. So let me let me break it down for you. Elevated temperatures affect insect distribution, insect development, and reproduction. And these impacts combine to change the population dynamics as well as the composition of the insect population. In addition to this, the increased temperatures will also result in an increase in the spread of insect-borne diseases. It will also cause pest outbreaks to be more severe and more frequent, and it will require us to alter our pest management strategies. So, so let me just focus on four of these issues quickly. On the matter of insect population growth and reproduction rate, as the temperature rises, the insect's metabolism speeds up. So they're burning more energy, which means that they need to consume more food. And as they consume more food, they develop faster, they develop larger, and they'll reproduce and lay more eggs. The end result is an increase in the insect population and ultimately more crop damage. This is further compounded by extreme conditions such as drought. And as we experience more of these extreme conditions, what tends to happen is that the plant nutritional value decreases. And as the plant nutritional value decreases, that means that insects will need to feed on more of the plants to get the nutrients that they need. So you see how everything ties in as the temperatures increase. One, yes. it's like a ripple effect taking place in the environment. Another thing that we have to be cognizant of is the change in the distribution patterns of our insects. Because what happens is, Areas which were not suitable for insects to live before are becoming more suitable. And as they become more suitable, you have insects moving into these areas. So these areas would, these insects would not naturally be in these areas. So as that occurs, it changes the ecosystem in that area and the damage that the insects can cause is severe. Compounding this is that High temperatures means that the insects can travel for a much, 
much further distance than before. So they're getting stronger. Absolutely. So a way to, 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 to envision what is happening with these insects is that as the temperature increase, it's like putting injector cleaner in you know, your care fuel. Uh, and, and as the care engine start operating, you're getting more miles than you normally would. So that is what's wow. happening with the insects as the temperatures increase. What an analogy. That is actually very frightening. Yeah. Yep. So that is why we have to be aware of what's happening and put things in place so that we can limit or reduce the impact that this will have on our agricultural operation. All right, Siobhan, we're just about on the break. So we're going to clear the commercials and come right back. And, of course, this is Real Issues, Real Solutions from Newport First Sand, Jamaica. First Sand in the field. And so when we come back, we'll pick up on these issues that he's identified because they're not just identifying the issues. They're also telling you what you can do if you have the challenges. Farmers, you can now prevent and cure fungal diseases with Eradicate Systemic Fungicide from Newport for Sand Jamaica Limited. Eradicate is effective against rust in coffee, citrus, sugarcane and peanut, black and yellow cicatoca, early blight, mildews, purple blotch in onions and other fungal diseases. Get your Eradicate at your nearest farm store or at the Newport for Sand office to a 2B Worry Wharf complex. Stay in control with Eradicate. Right, so we're inside the feature first and in the field real issues real solutions with us this morning Shavan little product development agronomist and we are talking about the implications of increased temperatures on insect pest dynamics uh, Shavan has already pointed out that there are certain disruptions that uh, can or are already taking place we're talking about issues such as the availability or unavailability of water uh, the high temperature having that adverse effect on the growth and reproduction of plants and what he has described as altered insect pest dynamics where the insects are becoming in terms of their growth pattern more prolific they are stronger they are able to move over longer distances and so they're in a position to create even more problems for our agricultural sector. So, Shavan, I want yes. you then to guide us through the what the what the implications are in terms of the issues identified for crop production and productivity. Because we've been telling our farmers, we're drumming it every day on this show. <laughs> we're saying increase production and productivity. But these insects are giving them a, a a run for their money aren't they yes they are and it, it it seems like it's a battle that we are losing so implications of the issues as a result of the insect pest dynamics changing obviously we're going to have a reduction in crop yield and crop quality because look at the equation higher insect pest population equals more damage to plants and this damage is especially critical when it occurs at those important stages in your crop cycle so when you transplant your seedlings if they get damaged at that stage that's a big blow when they're starting to enter um, flowering and fruiting and they get damaged that's another big blow so all of those things combine and compound to reduce the yield at the end right and I mentioned before that the temperatures also um, affect the physiology of the plant. So you have cases where you have more physiological injuries, which reduces the crop health and resilience. So things like if you're growing your, your, your sweet pepper and you, 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 you notice a discoloration on the fruit, that sunburn or sun scalding. You also have cases where the leaves wilt and roll up so they stop functioning once that happens so all of these combine to one reduce 
the quality of the fruit or the, the, the end product, the yield of your, your, your crop, and two, reduce the, the, the productivity. So you get, you're getting much smaller fruits than you should um, that don't have meet the, the, the standards that you want. Another issue that occurs is there's an increase in virulence and transmission of insect-borne diseases. And what that is, or what virulence is, it, it speaks to viruses and how viruses can affect the plant. So what we're seeing is that as insects feed more frequently, it's going to increase the risk of transmission because you have greater numbers of pests feeding from one plant to the next. And insects are the vectors which transmit viruses from one plant to the next. So if, when, you, when, you, when you think about white flies and aphids, under these high temperature conditions, the reproduction and the life cycle, they have many generations occurring in a very short period of time. So you have a massive explosion in the population size. And this is a challenge that affects a lot of our farmers. Based on this, another issue that we observe occurring is increased pesticide use and increased pesticide resistance, which leads to a decrease in the efficacy of the pesticide. And this is a very important point because we oftentimes have farmers using a lot of pesticides with different names. However, the active ingredient on the pesticide is the same. So essentially, they're applying the same active ingredient to fight the, the, the pest. And with the rate at which the pest reproduce, it's a high possibility that the next generation of that insect pest that is born will be resistant to that particular active ingredient that they're using. And if they're resistant, it's no longer going to affect them. So their population will continue growing. And all of these that I've mentioned before equates to economic loss. Because on one hand, you're spending more to buy these pesticides to make more frequent pesticide application. And on the other hand, the insect pests are damaging our plant, reducing the output of the plant, reducing the quality of the products of the plant. So you're not even getting uh, market, the, the, the proper market value. And this has a severe implication, especially when, it, when, when we look at global trade and uh, some of our trade partners, because then if our fruits of our, our produce have pests, insect pests especially on them, it's going to become a barrier for trade between these nations. So it's very important that we pay attention to some of the practices of, so that we can manage and reduce how this can affect our bottom line. Siobhan, this is, a, this is heavy. This is a lot to take in. But luckily, <laughs> luckily, there are solutions, which is why this feature is called what it is called because it is important for us to identify the issues and the challenges. And so, having done so, having taken a look at those real issues, let us now see if we can jump into the real solutions. Uh, so, what do you all propose then? What are some of the strategies that you would recommend for managing and reducing the adverse impact of these high temperatures on our farming systems? All right, Althea. Excellent question. One of the first points we have to start is varietal selection. We have to be mindful of the varieties of the various crops that we grow in. Some varieties are more susceptible to pests. Some varieties are more susceptible to our um, higher temperatures. So we need to select varieties that are more adapted to, to the increase in temperatures and more adapted to the common pests that we have so that they, they are more resistant and more tolerant to these factors. Another thing that we want to practice as well is the utilization of mulching in our operation. Mulching is a conservation method that helps us in reducing the rate at which we lose water from our soil from non-plant activity. 
Right, so the only thing that, that, that we want to be taking water from the soil is the plan to transpiration pool. Outside of that, we don't want to be losing moisture from our soil. So in utilizing the various types of mulch, and it's very popular in, in, in places like St. Elizabeth where they use the, 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 the grass to cover the surface of the soil. And it has the added benefit of adding nutrients um, back to the soil. And this one, and I cannot overstress this particular measure, ensuring proper crop nutrition. Because a healthy crop is a resilient crop. If your crop is not healthy, if it's not getting all the nutrients it needs to, to grow and, and develop its internal defenses, it's going to be very susceptible. It's going to be like if a man have flu, a man immune system compromised and in catch flu, I mean, up a, a hospital. So it's very important oh. that we ensure that the nutritional component of our activity is tip top. Has to be the best. The plant should not be in want or in need for any of the nutrients that is, that is required for them to grow. Yes. Additionally, and we can talk about this and not mention IPM. But I'm not going to go into all the steps of IPM, which is the integrated pest management approach. There, there you, do have, in- you do have time. You can go through uh, <laughs> some of it because I can yeah. hold you over Definitely. Into, the, into the next segment. So break it down because I think what we're discussing this morning is really very critical. Because, Siobhan, I, I, I have a feeling that we're... We're focusing this morning on the heat, but also there is the rain to come, which brings with it its own set of, of, of issues. So talking about that integrated pest management program is really critical, I think. Absolutely. And one of the most important things in our integrated pest management approach is the If you're not out there in the field, Happening, looking, looking for uh, for things that look abnormal. You 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 you're behind the eight ball. You're 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 at the back of the race because mm-hmm. you have to 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 identify. You have to know that something is there to even begin to think about treating it. To think of, to be even begin to treat, think about being able to control or manage it. So constant monitoring, constant scouting of the field is critical. I want our farmers to get into the habit of walking their field, looking at the plant, observing any abnormal thing because they have to be able to identify and diagnose pest damage, which leads me to the next step. You identify that something is wrong. But if your diagnosis is wrong, mm. what you apply to treat it won't solve the problem. Right. So it, it is important that we have correct identification and diagnosis of the pest issue that is affecting our field. And like some of the pest, insect pests that is out there, like our mites, these things are very difficult to see with the naked eye. In some cases, some varieties of the mice, you actually can't see with your naked eye, you'll only see the damage. We, but we want our farmers to use tools because technology is there, and that is where the world is heading. Technology is there to help us to identify what is happening in the field. So um, farmers can get a digital microscope. Very, very it's inexpensive. But the value that comes with that, you observe a leaf that looks abnormal. You just use your microscope and your, and, and, and your phone, zoom in on the leaf, and you'll actually see those microscopic insects moving on the leaf. Because we have, we have several instances where we're out in the field, we see something wrong on the, the, the pepper leaf, the leaves are curling. You look on it, you're not seeing anything. But when you look on the microscope, you see many small mites crawling across. And things like this 
is what our farmers need to get into to better be able to identify what the challenge is so that they can correctly address it. So very, very important information being shared here, Siobhan. We're on the break, on to the final break. And so when we come back, we will hear a little bit more about these solutions and, of course, uh, talk about any upcoming activities that you have. Miss Betty, early blight, take over my tomato. I will have a full of powder meal do. What me I go do? Clear way. Oh, you are telling me to clear way. Let me think me are your friend. <laughs> No mask here, so may I tell you for use Clearway from Newport First and Jamaica. It is a conduct and systemic fungicide with protective and curative actions against a wide range of fungal diseases such as anthrax nose and early blight in tomato, purple blotch in onion, late blight in potato, leaf spot in peanut, powdery mildew in pepper, and much more. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Betty. You're really my friend. Me am coming Newport first and rep right now. Can't forget that name there. Clear away. Clear away. Farmers, get your supply today. Another premium product from Newport for San Jamaica Limited. We're rounding out conversation now with Siobhan Little, product development agronomist with the Newport for San Jamaica. We've been focusing this morning on the implications of increased temperatures and insect pest dynamics. And it isn't good news because we are seeing an increase in insect in the insect population and they have really, as I said to Siobhan earlier, been giving farmers a run for their money. But the good news is what we're going to get from Siobhan now because, of course, Siobhan, we, we, uh, we have to find ways of control. You have already ind indicated some of it, but uh, just quickly guide us through the rest of the good news that you have and what farmers should be doing in order to dig themselves out of this hole that is not of their own doing, by the way. Right. So um, before we close out there, there uh in terms of some of the other strategies that farmers can use to reduce the, the impact of insect pests, I want to highlight two other ones. Um, one is a barrier crop approach where you plant and a crop around the border of your field that that's the first contact that the insects will have before getting into your field and oftentimes especially when you talk about like the white flies and the aphids when they feed on this barrier crop the any virus or any pathogen that they would be transmitting it goes into this barrier crop reducing the impact that you'll have in your actual primary crop of, of focus so that is another practice that i want more of our farmers to be engaged in because it's something that can greatly improve the productivity in their field and i cannot stress this i mentioned it earlier but i cannot stress this enough but we want our farmers to engage in proper rotation of chemistries of the pesticide that they're using as opposed to just changing the name of the pesticide that they're using so i want our farmers to pay keen attention to the labels on the pesticide and the active ingredient that is on that, that label because the active ingredient is, is, is really what is affecting that control or that management of the pest. And we want to use active ingredient that is different, one, in terms of what, what, what it's called, and two, that falls in a different group of pesticides. So pesticides have various groups and oftentimes we might have different actives in the same group right what 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 the importance of knowing this is that pesticides in the same group work in the same way and the insects will develop resistance to these pesticides at the same rate so we want to ensure that our farmers are paying keen attention to this bit of information that is on the product label when you purchase your your, your pesticides to utilize in your field and of course you know the proper protective personal protective equipment so you, you, you want to use your gloves you want to have your, your coverall you want to be in your water boots 
you want to ensure that you have your goggles and ensure that you're not spraying in windy conditions. Those, 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 those sorts of things. That, that is fundamental when it comes on to pest management and um, safety or uh, safe use of pesticides. Now, as we come so, man, further... Don't, before you... Sure, don't, move, don't move yet to your next point because I have a call online. I'm going to take the call. Good morning, Richard. Miss Mark, good morning. How are you? Good. I am very well, thanks. How are you? Very good. The question I have for you, Agonis, here is about um, preparing sales of sales in the market for people who are the rooftop farming and who have Tony and Marley style and um, condition at the backyard. Is that feasible to treat it, to give it whatever um, fertilizer that those cells would need to, to, to help it? I don't know if they're the one who could be... Richard, there's a home on your line and I didn't get everything that you said. I don't know if Siobhan heard you clearly. Siobhan, did you hear him? No, I'm not hearing him clearly at all. All right. So, so you, Richard, repeat what you said. Slow it down because he didn't hear and I didn't hear. Okay. I, I was referring to like preparing start to sell to the market mixed with all of these uh, fertilizers or some foul chemical that can kill these insects is Preparing it feasible soil. yes to sell to the like, right. like people under the roof are farming and they have okay. some people have a stony and a marley um, condition at the backyard okay well i have a sense that uh Siobhan is going to suggest something that they've always done at newport first hand but let me allow him to say it Siobhan? <laughs> right all right so let, let, let me see if I'm, I'm understanding the question correctly so you're saying if they're what should be done to treat soil that persons have in their backyard? Is that what is that the question that you're having, or are you seeing something else that you no, want? I'm asking if you guys can have the soil people that we can purchase it to do our backyard farming and rooftop farming with all the okay, chemicals. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, there, there, there are various options available um, when you when you're talking about about backyard gardening and um, rooftop gardening. Right, so if it's a backyard and you actually have soil, um, we can do testing and give you the necessary ameliorants and the necessary nutrients to bring that soil to a level that will allow you to produce in it. If if it's if the, if it's not, if you don't have any soil in the backyard, then what we'd recommend you do is purchase a soilless medium, um, something like a professional grain mixture of peat moss, perlite, something like that or even coca cola and then now we can supply you with the nutrients that you need um, to have plants grow successfully in, in, in those mediums. Right? So obviously you have to content, contemplate um, your nutrient delivery system, which in most cases is going to be a tank that you apply the nutrients in and you have your various um, irrigation system in place to deliver the nutrients from the tank to the growing media which you'll have your plants growing in all right uh, richard i i trust that will help you and of course we thank you so very much for reaching out i i do believe that it was a very good question and will assist other farmers as well all right Siobhan, so back to you now because we're wrapping this up right um so you hear me mention just to close out in terms of what some what are some of the things that first and is doing in addition to the, some of the strategies that i shared earlier one of the things you heard me stress earlier is the need for proper crop nutrition and one of the things that we are we at first and are proud to to promote is the scientific approach when it comes on to crop cultivation and the first step in the scientific approach is having a clear understanding of what your soil brings to the table. So what's the nutritional status of the soil? What's the pH of the soil? These are two critical things that once you have the formula correct, you can get a lot of productivity out of that soil. And one of the key things in, you know, stay combating the insect, um, insect infestation is having healthy plants in the first place. So, at first, then we provide soil testing services. So, we'll come, 
sample the area that you're cultivating, the soil in the area that you're cultivating, I will have that tested. And then from that test, we'll know what exactly your soil has and what exactly your soil needs. And then we, we take a precise approach in providing those nutrients based on the crop that you, you, you're going to be cultivating and ensuring that the plant is able to take up the, those nutrients. And in addition to this, we, we also conduct field visits, field appraisal, and offer technical advice based on the operation that you have and what you're doing. And of course, we conduct numerous farmers training sessions and different activities such as this radio program to ensure that we're disseminating information about what it is that you can do as a farmer to improve on what it is that is taking place in your field, right? Uh, we also do have pesticides that can help assist in controlling some of these insect pests. So early in the program, I would have mentioned white flies and aphids, right? Two of our products, which are very effective in controlling these type of insect pests, would be our spectra and our sucker. You can utilize these two products in rotation to help to limit or reduce the impact that some of these insect pests can have on your operation. And I also mentioned about virus, right? We have a product well, Siobhan, on the market. This, this sounds like we might have to do a part two because I'm <laughs> out of time. But I'm going to be at the Rada Manchester Open Day. Correct. So tomorrow, June, sorry, not, not tomorrow, June 7 is the rather open day in manchester so first and we'll be there so all our farmers in and around the manchester um, rather parish office even if you're not close by but you're in the parish and you have the time we're, we're encouraging our farmers to come by and see what what's happening see how they can benefit from the services and products that we at first and is offering them all right thank you so very much siobhan uh, great talking with you this morning all right. Pleasure is mine. All right. Take care. And just a quick word from them before we wrap. First Sand in the Field, Real Issues, Real Solutions, was brought to you by Newport First Sand Jamaica Limited, the first on the land.